Hi everyone, it's Allison. I'm in my violin studio and today I want to talk about staccato. I'm doing a series of videos on different aspects of staccato. In this video I want to talk about um, using the staccato element, the, the quality of being able to bite into your string, um, in order to develop really good left-right hand coordination. Um, so just to review, the staccato stroke, you bite into the string, you have the duration of your note, and you bite back in. Okay, so three parts: bite, play, bite. If you have repeated, I'm trying to exaggerate so you can see that that bow uh, stick biting down. Okay, so three things we're going to talk about: uh, left-right coordination with finger placement, uh, string crossings, and uh, how to how to get clean bow changes. So the first thing is finger placement. And I've talked about this elsewhere, so if you've seen all of my videos, you may recognize this. Uh, look, if the, the problem is this. If you're playing legato notes, it's very difficult to get that timed up properly. In uh, what We really try to benefit from staccato notes wherever we can. In places where it's appropriate to play staccato, we use that and have really, really clean um, finger action, rhythm, and sound quality. In places where the staccato is actually inappropriate and we're trying to play a legato or some other sort of stroke, um, then we rely on the precision of the technique that we developed while studying staccato in order to make those things line up really well when there is actually not a staccato break. Because we get, we get this break, you see? When you bite back in, there's a break. So let's place our finger. And now that I've bit back into string, place. Bite, place. Now I've bit into the string, and now over the E string. see that I'm placing the fingers when I don't have any movement in the bow. The bow is completely stopped and, and because it's bitten into the string. You can almost think of that as being like a rhythm, if you think of a, a jazz band or a pop band, it's something where there's a, a drummer with a hi-hat and you're doing doom shtick, doom shtick, doom shtick. So it's kind of like doom shtick. And then when you go quickly, that's pretty clean, okay? Never, 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 never try to place a finger at the same time that you're actually starting the stroke, okay? It's got to happen before. Um, and if you're playing legato stuff, melodic stuff, you may be thinking, but, you know, I have to. Actually not. Um, it, it's possible because there's really fractionally small amounts of time involved, right? It's so... Uh, that's why practice your staccato scales. Your hand, your arm, your ear will get really good at coordinating that so that when you're actually playing legato, those guys work together so well that they will make the legato come out clean. But if you always play legato, then you, you don't tend to develop that, that really precise coordination. Okay, so that is using the staccato element to develop really good finger placement coordinated with your bow stroke. Um, the second one is string crossings. Uh, I see people all the time trying to cross a string. Let's say you've got, you've got a note here and a... I see a lot of people trying to actually physically cross over and place a finger and start the note in exactly the same instant. And I can tell you, it just doesn't work. You can get pretty close, but there's always an element of sloppiness. Um, and you can you can push your way through to some fairly advanced technique, you know, be playing some, you know, third position concerto kind of stuff. And there's still this little sloppy element because the stuff just doesn't line up. And I tell you, um, in violin, precision and cleanliness, <laughs> I know it's frustratingly uncreative. And, and you want to play music because music is a creative thing. But if 
if your instrument is not responding in a reliable way, you can't be creative with it. So you have to be really dogmatic and very, very disciplined. Um, you know, when you play a piano, you don't have to worry about if some of the hammers are going to be sloppy or if some of them are going to be clean. I mean, the instrument is already there for you to play on. But with a violin, you have to create the mechanism. So everything that concerns the actual mechanism of playing, you have to be really surgically precise, and very clean, um, and, and very dogmatic. It's always got a the mechanism needs to work the same all the time because otherwise sometimes it'll sound good and sometimes it won't and that <laughs> it's not fun <laughs> you know because then you will of course have your creative musical aspect but to have that undermined by by poor or unreliable technique is is just well, certainly from the teacher's perspective that's extremely frustrating to see because you you know I know how hard people work so that's why I want you to have a precise tool so that when you invest a certain amount of effort, you will actually get a result from. Okay, so string crossing, the proper way to string cross. Don't let your bow move. Okay, you bite into the string, and then, uh, can you see the arm? The arm just adjusts. You, you, Your hand and the bow don't change. Your arm comes to the new string level, right? There we go. Now we're on the new string. Don't let your your bow be moving on the string, you'll get unpleasant sounds. Um, and so if you're at a high string level, bite into the string and just drop. That way, if you actually have to skip a string, it'll still be clean, right? Um, there are times when you're supposed to... <laughs> um, okay, so that's a different situation. I'll deal with it when we get there. Um, a slur. <laughs> Of course, you don't stop your bow if you have a slur. Um, and and if you're thinking, yes, but I'm playing in a legato passage. Again, we don't want to hear that crossing over. So practice that in a staccato fashion. develop the ability to, to time that really, really precisely. So use the staccato element to create the really clean uh, coordination. Okay, so use staccato a lot, <laughs> and when you can't use it, you will benefit from the skill you've developed by using it. Okay, um, third, uh, legato bow strokes. Okay, this is a classic. Here, let me back up so you can... Watch. Uh, this is something that I see all the time when people come to me who've been studying elsewhere or haven't had lessons for a while. So, <laughs> I'm exaggerating because I can't really do it. But um, there's a, a lot of confusion about how to, how to change your bow stroke. Um, it's just kind of, and I don't think it actually occurs to anybody that they have that question in their minds, but there's this tendency to speed up and kind of throw your hand so that on the rebound, you start the next bow stroke, you know, because if you just kind of throw your hand, it will bounce back, right? Um, that's not a, really a good solution for, <laughs> for bow changes because it's not really clean. And if you have a note, you know, kind of a... A low speed note where you've got some nice quality and you suddenly throw your bow what happens is you're ripping the bow out of the string so your sound quality just went to pot and your 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 bow distribution calculations are it just came to nothing although you may not be doing bow distribution calculations yet but so the <laughs> the fact of the matter is it the answer is so simple it's kind of silly stop your forearm if it's a for forearm bow stroke okay so you're playing your note you just let your forearm run out of speed steam and it stops and there you are and now you just start again <laughs> okay so if you put that up to speed okay so I've got that little staccato element in there okay and that it's like if you've ever um, uh, diving, sorry, I'm trying to think what verb tense, 
Um, if, if you've ever dove, divin, if you had ever dived off of a diving board, okay, um, you know, you don't just stand there and fall into the water. You, the, the diving board is a little bit springy and, and you kind of push with your toes against and you, boom, right? And you go diving in, it gives you a clean beginning. Your bow stroke is the same. You kind of need to kick your toes against something to get the bow going. So that's why we need to bite into the string a little bit. On a legato note, it's not going to be very much. It's got to be precise and clean. Okay, those are clean notes. Um, the ability to do a really good legato comes out of having cleaned this up to start with. Now we can go. Because we, we, we use that, that precision that we develop when working with the staccato. So in the, in, the, in, in the first phase of this process, just make sure that you're not kind of whipping your arms around the corners in order to get your bow changes. Okay, so <laughs> that, that can be simplified. Um, here's an image for you. You can think of the staccato element as being like the curtains at the theater. Uh, when you go to see a play, there are of course modern plays where there are no curtains and maybe the characters carry the sets and decors around with them and replace them. Um, you want that done precisely. You don't want your character in the middle of a conversation picking up a piece of decor and getting lost and, and having to go across the stage three times, right? So if you think of a traditional theater, there's a curtain and, and between scene one and scene two, the curtain closes, you hear the crew and they're moving stuff around and then the curtain opens and we've got a new scene. That's kind of what happens when you bite your bow into the staccato stop. Okay, because now I can change strings, I can place fingers, I can re replace my hand position. Eventually you can shift or jump um, and it won't be hurt so that the beginning of your next note will be clean and precise. That's really important. Most shifting actually. We want to hear something, but there are spots where you don't want to hear it. So, um, so you can think of the this stop in the string, the staccato element, as being the curtains closing, and and then once you've mastered that, then you can choose the moments when actually we don't mind hearing a little something carefully chosen. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so I hope that that helps uh, clarify some things and give you something to work with. All right. Have a good practice session. Take care.